My name is Emily Forster and this is my documentary on the history of Luton Rugby Club. I'm going to take you for a look around some of the areas within the club. This is where the documentary will take place, so this is the outside of the club. Most of the events here take place on a Thursday, which is when the first team and some of the youth teams train ready for the game on either Saturday or Sunday. Saturday is when the first 15 play and then on Sunday is when the youth and mini teams either train or have a game. It just depends on if they've had a game booked or anything. Here is the members bar where the teams that play at home, including the first team and the youth teams, get their food. This is also the area where family members come and wait on a Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday evening for their children to finish training for the game that would be either played on a Saturday for the first 15 and a Sunday for the youth and mini teams. This is the changing room corridor where both the youth teams and the first team get ready before and after the game. Down here is also where the physio takes place who, for players that have sustained injuries during the game or training. This is the Dave Brown committee room where all the meetings take place including youth and mini meetings and the senior management meetings. Finally, here is the pitch where the first 15 play when they are at home. On the other side is where the coaches and substitutes for both the home and away team watch the match. There are also two dugouts for the teams to sit in whilst the game is being played. The scoreboard is also on the other side which is used when the first team games are played. Good evening. Good evening, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Yeah. So how many years have you actually been with the club then? I started with this club in 1977 um, at the age of 17, which is quite late compared to young people today. Um, it was a choice of football, football terraces and, uh, and rugby and I'd never really thought about rugby but um, I was going to football matches with friends and there was a gentleman in our local pub, a big gentleman called Richard Moore, all six foot five of him, ex-Queen's Gren uh, Grenadier Guard and he was a very impressive man, very smart man. And we had a flip of a coin to see one day whether we, he'd come with us to the football. Or we would, and was, I say we, there was two other friends of mine, a chap called Mick Rodell, who played years here, and Danny Abella, who was also a very successful youth player. And uh, the three of us were going to the football. Anyway, Richard won the, won, won the flip of the coin. So uh, Nick didn't make it on that particular day, but Danny and I came down to Wood Meadow, which was a Rotherham school ground that we had before we came here and um, the gut we were only Colts at that time we weren't senior players and we got a game playing against our local rivals Stockwood and uh, it was it was an it, uh, it was a great day and back in the old day you had a bit of rough and tumble we both scored a try and uh, the rest is history as they say I mean that particular Colts team that we married into ended up being a hugely successful side uh, we won the County Cup three years in succession, uh, beating Stockwood uh, twice and, and Bedford Blues, we beat Bedford, Bedford Town's cold side at their place. Uh, so that, that was impressive, that's how good our side was. We had some wonderful players, some of which went on to represent this club for many, many years. Names like Martin Jones, um, Paddy Boyland, um, Mark Sibley and of course Huey Byrne who is our mentor, mm -hmm. he, he looks after this club, he's such an important man to this club, which I'll come to a little bit later. So, uh, so that's what happened, that's what happened in 1977, I never went back to the football and I stayed with the rugby. So, do you know when the club was actually founded? This club, I can't give you exact dates, I'm afraid I'm not a historian as far as that's concerned. I know that the, the club, pre-war, now, Pre-war, there was the old Lutonians. Um, I do believe over the war years, and I, please don't quote me, but I will, I will, um, let me just get this right. I think they split up, there was something to do with a, uh, there was a breakaway and a rugby league team got formed. And then after the war, 
that they were all one, the Lutonians. That was stopping them moving. That anybody from Luton was playing with this group of players. I'm not 100 if it was Union or actually League. Um, and then I believe that after the war they came back and there was a few guys that started up Luton Rugby Club. So um, its roots are pre-war. Um, its its actual existence is probably post-war. Uh, actual days and dates, I'm afraid I can't give you. That's absolutely. Had you had you let me know before I've done my homework, <laughs> I've still probably got it wrong. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely fine. There's yeah, no yeah, need. Yeah. But have you been around when the club has had quite a few of its promotions? Then. So. Yes. Yes. Well, I was very fortunate to uh, to have been around in the early days when I played. There were great players, and I can name names. Um, but but certainly blokes like Neil Foster and guys who are trustees and senior members of the club here still today, Phil Wilson, um, um, Dick John, Richard John, um, these guys, uh, Barry Smith, th th these were wonderful players back in my time. They were all the first teamers along with many, many other names. Those guys um, did, did bring um, the club into a promotive state. Now you've got to remember when we played, um, there, was no, there was no leagues, it, it was all prestige. Um, but there were a lot of cup competitions and then you got County and East Midlands and, and Luton done very, very well as a junior club. Um, in the latter years, once the leagues commenced in the early 90s, it was about 92-3, um, professional came in, professionalism came in at the top and then it filtered down to our leagues whereby we, we started having leagues. Uh, Luton, for many, many years, um, were around should we say not too many above where we are now and never lower um, and, and some very very good sides um, but we struggled at that league. Yeah absolutely we've obviously when you talked about like we've got has quite a few highs it, I also think about the 104 nil match game that happened this year. Yes that, that, that's a bit of a mismatch that was against Stuart and Lloyd's um, a club that we've played over the years. Back when I was playing, there was no leagues. We played Stuart and Lloyd's. They've always been tight games. We've always kind of, I would like to think we've always had the edge, but I'm going to say that bad one you mentioned. So, <laughs> but th th that particular day, we, we had a full set of guys out. It was just after Christmas. I do believe they had a few injuries, but we really came to the party. They had a lot of young guys that were perhaps playing a little bit out of their, their depth, shall we say. I don't like to see scores like that. I don't think it's any good for the uh, winning team. I don't think it's any good for the losing team. And it's not good for, for the game. Nobody wants to be part of sport when it's only one team and two teams turn up. Um, so I'm not trying to knock you back on that, but it, it is a high. But you get much higher games. You know, when you go away to um, Market Harbour and you get a, a narrow win and they're, one, that they're above us in the league, and you, that, there's a high. Okay, and last question for the evening. Was uh, is there any news about the move? Yes, you know where there we're is. Going? Yes, most definitely. It is our wish, and it's a necessity that Luton Rugby Club vacate this area. Or might I say, it is a member's wish because we've come up with a with a couple of um, should we say um, options. We're on our third option now. We, we brought it to the members the first time we were going to move in the Caddington area. Uh, that didn't quite work out. You know, we tried again, um, made it a bit more public, and, and unfortunately we were gazumped on that. Um, so this time we have got another option. Um, I'm not I'm not at liberty to, buy, to to divulge where it is purely because we're not there yet. And until we get over the line, we're not at liberty to divulge that sort of information. But the idea is that Luton move from this clubhouse to a state-of-the-art, brand-new uh, facility in the local area with, Fiji, uh, with 4G facilities. Um, that gives great availability to local sports, lots of community sports, being able to use the facility. Now, if the turnkey situation means that we walk out of here and walk straight into there. Um, but at this present moment in time, um, we're trying to get planning permission on this land and also the, the proposed land that, that we want to offer the membership. And that's as long as the membership accept the new pro proposition. So yes, it, it, is, it is definitely what we want to do. The, the club will get 
a huge boost. Financially, the club will be secure. Um, I, I can't say forever, but certainly see me out. And um, and that that would be that would be wonderful. Be very very good. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Emily, thank you. Very good. Bye bye. Right, I'm here with Daniel Jenkins, a player of Luton Under 15s. Good afternoon. How are you? How was the game? <laughs> but, <laughs> well, how many years have you been playing at the club? Have you enjoyed it? Yes, been a lot of fun. Do you think? <laughs> do you think you see yourself playing here in ten years' time? Yeah, I hope to be playing here in ten years' time. That's good. I'm here with Robert Forster, under-15s player. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How did you find the game today? Um, the game was tough, but um, we had a lot of things that we needed to improve on and we were going through during training. Okay. How many years have you been playing at the club? Um, almost eight years. Wow, that's a long time. What made you decide to start playing rugby? Well, basically, um, I saw my friend play rugby uh, for the same club, and so I decided to join the season after. Okay, that sounds good to me. That sounds good. Do you enjoy playing? Of course. If I didn't, then I wouldn't be playing for seven years. Ah, that's very much true. Do you think that you'll be still be playing rugby in 10 years' time? Uh, possibly. I'm just waiting to see where my um, career takes me. OK, thank you ever so much. Right, this is my interview with Dan Forster, coach from the under-15s, and also a rugby enthusiast. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Emily. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. So, how many years have you been playing at the club? Well, not playing, but coaching. Um, I would say it's four, five years. Right. Did you ever play rugby at a young age or any sport? I did. I'd done uh, rugby, um, infants, middle school, high school, played football, athletics, done lots and lots of sport all the way through my school. So does that mean you'd have a lot of speed when it came to doing rugby if you played those other different events? Football players really do help. Um, you tend to find that they're people who play on the wings because they've got the speed okay. and the agility. Right, is that where you usually played then, that position? I did, I did. Right, last question. What made you decide to start coaching rugby? Uh, my son, Robert, um, started playing. And after season, season and a half, I was asked if I wanted to help out. And uh, that's that really. And haven't looked back since. Okay, thank you ever so much. You're welcome. But this is my interview with Morgan Bath, a former player and also a supporter of the under 15s. Good afternoon. How are you? Yes. Thank you. Right, how many years have you been supporting the club? Um, since I was. before I was five. So that's quite a while then, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. How, how many years did you play at the club for? Uh, eight years. That's a very long time. Do you see yourself possibly coming back here to support the team in the future? Like, a lot more than you do? Yes. Right, that's it. Thank you so much. I'm here with Pino Fierro, the supporter and also a first aid from the under 15s. Good afternoon. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, it's good, thank you. How did you feel that game went today? Absolutely awful, but it's probably the coach's fault and not the players. But <laughs> tell them that. <laughs> how many years have you been supporting the club? Oh my goodness, um, that's a very good question. I don't know if you know the answer. However long Lucas has been playing, about three or four years. Okay, that's good. Do you think you're going to support the club a lot more if Lucas continues to? To play very a lot more. So, yes, yes. That's good. Do you like this club? Is it interesting? Very friendly club. Absolutely fantastic. People are great. Parents are great. Coaches are great. So all the kids are good as well. So. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. Have a nice You're afternoon. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. The facts include that the club was started post-war, and that each of the interviewees have been at the club for a certain amount of years. Whether that is being a supporter of the club, a player who is involved with the club at the moment.